You're listening to All the Pieces, a podcast created to keep you informed and to highlight the great things we have going on at Mosaic and in the communities we serve. Let's take a look at all the amazing pieces here at Mosaic that together make us great. Now here's your host, Chief Quality Officer, Dr. Curran Mohan. Hello and welcome to another episode of All the Pieces. I'm your host, Dr. Mohan. March is the month of Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month, and we will be talking about colorectal cancer. Though this topic can seem a little unappetizing or a little bit daunting, but it's something that is very essential to our daily lives. Colorectal cancer is a leading, no, I'll correct that, second leading cause of death according to World Health Organization. Roughly 1.9 million new cases of colorectal cancer and nearly 1 million deaths were attributed to colorectal cancer worldwide in 2020. There's hope, and that is with screening. Therefore, I have my host, co-host today, I would say, or guest, uh, Tony Henderson from Mosaic Life Care. Welcome, Tony. Hi, how are you? Good. Before we start into uh, what goes into cancer and awareness of it, give us a little brief bio on you. So I've been with Mosaic since 2011. Um, I actually started out as a tech on the floor and then moved to the clinical setting and kind of grew my way throughout the organization. Um, became an LPN and then an RN and then eventually went into management. I took over the GI clinic um, in October of 2021. Excellent. So as you know, colonoscopies or screening colonoscopies is a big part of uh, the GI clinic and your heavily involved in that. Uh, but before we get into all that, can you tell us any podcasts that you listen to? This is a question I ask everybody on the show. Um, I actually don't listen to any podcasts other than yours. Oh, um, thank you. You're, you're my, my one and only fan. Oh, um, we have viewership in the 20s now, guys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Excellent. So, um, and uh, any other activities uh, that you enjoy doing? Um, my children play sports. Um, they play about every sport, and That's it, I, then. I coach basketball and soccer. So excellent. So, uh, like I was mentioning earlier, uh, before we go into the screening, can you tell us a little bit about colorectal cancer? Yes. So, um, colorectal cancer is a disease in which the cells in the colon and the rectum grow out of control. Um, There's definitely risk factors that are involved with colorectal cancer. Um, Family history of colorectal cancer is probably the main one, um, and that's especially for those members that have been diagnosed before age 60. Smoking um, is another risk factor. Um, It actually increases your risk of colon cancer by 30 to 40 percent, and longstanding history of IBD. Okay. Any red meat has any contribution to it? Yes. Um, If you guys have eaten excessive amounts of red meat, um, we want you to try to, like, lower those consumptions um, to help reduce risk. So colorectal cancer is bad. We know that. We know there are risk factors, so the best thing would be to lower those risk factors. Correct. But we also know that with colorectal cancer, it is also preventable, correct? Correct. What are some methodologies people can do to prevent colorectal cancer? Um, Definitely by getting a colon screening. Um, That is one of the best ways um, to prevent colon cancer. No one really looks forward to a colonoscopy. It's not something that is on people's, you know, looking forward to-do list. Yes. Um, Especially the prep part. Yes. What are the guidelines for receiving a screening and what is the procedure like? Um, Well, I actually have yet to meet somebody that enjoyed their prep with their colonoscopy. (laughs) Um, But uh, I did want to touch base on that because the prep is the most important, is one of the most important pieces in getting the screening. If a patient isn't fully prepped and doesn't have their prep completely, um, it can decrease the visualization of the colon. Mm -hmm. And so incomplete preps, they can result in patients potentially being rescheduled. And if a patient didn't appreciate their jug of Go Lightly the first time, they actually get another jug of Go Lightly and have to re all the prep all over again so definitely making sure you know you get it knocked out the first time is is the best Um, guidelines for screening colonoscopy um, it's recommended for everybody that is age 45 to 75 um, regardless of family history and so the procedure itself is a very simple procedure about 95 percent of patients tolerate the procedure without any pain or any significant symptoms Um, It's fairly quick. You're in and out of there within a couple of hours. The actual procedure in itself only takes about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, 
So okay. it is very tolerable. I believe that. Tony, you mentioned that the screening age is now 45. From what I remember, it used to be 50. Yes, they did lower the screening age to 45 because most first initial colonoscopies um, were actually showing positive cases for colon cancer. So it was lowered to 45. That makes sense. Uh, early detection is half the cure as the same medicine. Uh, so can you talk to us a little bit about the most common results from having a colonoscopy and what the next steps might look like if something shows up in that procedure? Yes. So if a patient has a normal colonoscopy, which is going to be no polyps, no lesions, um, the recommendation is to have a repeat colonoscopy in 10 years. Um, if somebody does have polyps, um, most common types of polyps are called tubular adenomas. Um, they are usually harmless, but they do have the potential to turn into cancer within five to ten years. So when we see a polyp in a colonoscopy, we will resect it and we will send it off for pathology. Um, if the if the lesion does come back as a cancerous lesion, um, we will first stage the lesion um, and then decide which treatment best suits it and we will either remove the lesion during the colonoscopy or set a patient up for a procedure um, if it's a larger area or consider treatment um, with chemotherapy, et cetera. If it is a positive yes. uh, lesion. And for non-medical folks out there, lesion is pretty much any sort of abnormality in the, the findings, really, anything that does not supposed to be there. Yes. I know these medical terms can sometimes uh, cause a lot of confusion when a patient is looking at their information in their my portal on epic or anything like that that can be oh what is a lesion you know but it's essentially something that doesn't belong there correct correct excellent uh, if someone meets the guidelines and needs to have screening or feel they have symptoms associated with colon cancer what should they do um, they need to reach out to their primary care provider. Um, if it's screening, you know, they'll get it. They will get the patient set up with our office, and we can get a patient set up for a procedure. If it's symptoms, we need to treat it accordingly. But ultimately, um, we'll get a patient taken care of. Excellent. So as you have heard from Tony Henderson today, colorectal cancer screening is an essential part of one's healthy well-being. It is one of the most preventable cancers out there. Obviously, there are risk factors for everybody who has, such as smoking, uh, increase in red meat consumption, uh, and genetic family components. Uh, if you have those, definitely discuss with your primary care doctor to get screened earlier. But other than that, the screening age is 45, readily available at Mosaic Life Care across all entities, and your primary care can help you set that up. Yes. If you have any questions regarding that, please reach out to Tony Henderson directly. And if you don't like Go Lightly and it's not your first drink of choice, make sure you follow all of your prep instructions. Abs that's a very important part. I remember that Go Lightly used to taste horrible back in the day because I remember tasting it as a medical student mm -hmm. out of curiosity. Have they changed the flavors now or is this still the same old orange or lemon flavor? They still have those flavors just oh. for you. <laughs> um, <laughs> they have developed different kinds of prep as well. So there's sometimes where we'll use alternatives. Um, Okay. Just whatever kind of suits best for the patient. Excellent. What other alternatives are there? Um, there's a medication called Plinview that we can use. Um, there is also Sutab or Suflave. Um, so we do have a couple of different options that we can use. For patients that have had bariatric sur surgery, they can't have all the volume from the Go Lightly. Um, so we do alter our prep. Um, we do prefer the go lightly and that's a gold standard yes um, it does clean out the patient the most um, and that's what we want we want a colon that is squeaky clean I so. gotcha <laughs> so the brown standard if you will that's um, right. <laughs> as much as you can make this topic fun you know um, and you also mentioned earlier that there are some indicators that we could look for if someone may or may not have colorectal cancer what could those indicators be um, so with colon cancer, it is known as the silent disease. Um, mm. Most patients are asymptomatic. Um, whenever they have polyps, and if the polyps are in the early stages, most patients don't know. Um, polyps that are in the late stages, they can grow, and whenever they do grow, there is potential for them to block the colon, which can cause bleeding. Um, so some of the indicators you know, would be blood in the stool, change in bowel habits, um, a new onset of constipation or diarrhea that doesn't go away, abdominal pain, and unintentional weight loss. Right, and those can be sort of non-constitutional symptoms for other cancers as well, not necessarily colorectal. So 
it's always good to always be paying attention to your body and seeing whatever changes are happening, especially after a certain age. Yes. Because, like I said, early detection is half the cure. Well, thank you for that, Tony. You're welcome. With that, I would like to conclude our discussion today on colorectal cancer screening. I'm your uh, host, Dr. Mohan, and as always, take care, brush your hair. Oh, look at that. We have props today. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for this episode of All the Pieces. Missed a podcast or interested in more information about any of our topics? Visit Connected to access the resources you need to be informed. Interested in having us cover a specific topic or giving us feedback? Send us an email at myepic at mymlc.com. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you.